Hey, welcome to Binomial Probability Distributions. Ah, that's a fair mouthful there. Uh, have a look around the screen. You might get some idea. But a probability distribution is, a dis is showing how the various probabilities for each of the outcomes in an experiment or trial of an experiment is distributed. So it's a, the spread or the distribution of probabilities over the outcomes. And, of course, binomial, I've tried to help you here by splitting the word into two and... What have we got here? From the Latin, uh, both have roots in the uh, Latin uh, language there, nomial or numbers. So we're looking at things by bicycle, two wheels, by here, two numbers or values, if you like. Can you see, perhaps up the top here, what we're talking about? We're talking about trials of some experiment. Here it's tossing a coin, which is by in nature. That is, there are two outcomes for each toss of this coin. And could be a head or a tail. And every time you toss it, you can only get a head or a tail. And a tree diagram helps us map out those uh, uh, possible outcomes or series of outcomes for various trials of the experiment. So a binomial situation, probability distribution, comes as a result of uh, trials of an experiment uh, which have two outcomes each time. Trials which have two outcomes. Now, it's going to be the same two outcomes, and we're going to be looking at situations where the probability of a success or a failure of one outcome or the other remains constant. So we usually do de designate those outcomes as a success, one thing we're looking for, or a failure we didn't get, what we were looking for or whatever so there's some of the language that's behind um, binomial probability distributions okay so tossing of a coin sure what about here we go down here we have spins I think it's a spin of this spinner up here which either is uh, blue or white okay so we've got two outcomes each time blue or white and so on we can keep doing spins i think you can see how uh, the outcomes are going to come about here looking at the tree diagram maybe we would like to look at a, a more mathematical way of analyzing that but we're going to come up with lots of probabilities aren't we probability of three blues two blues and a white whatever and what about this guy down here not looking too well and uh, what's he got to do with a binomial distribution? Well, you could get a cold or not a get a cold. So what's the probability there um, of uh, getting a cold or five out of 20 people in your class having colds or not having colds? What is the probability distribution of that? Okay, so there are a lot of interesting things flow from this now. So um, let's go and have a look at defining these binomial experiments or trials of a binomial um, in a little bit more detail. Come down and have a look at this one. Now you've seen the spinner up there. I chose this deliberately. Suppose a spinner has three blue edges and one white edge. On each occasion of spun, the chance of finish on blue is three quarters and on white is a quarter. Do you think the spins constitute binomial trials? Well, from what we've said so far, we'd say yes. Wouldn't we? Yes, because let's say the probability of a success... Uh, which we could call getting a blue is three quarters and the probability of failure to get that and this is the jargon usually used is one minus that, it's a quarter so we usually say P is the probability of a success and not getting P would be one take P sometimes in some books referred to as Q the probability of a failure so yes, it does look as if that's a binomial trial. Only two outcomes, the same two outcomes each time. So let's investigate this and see how we can build up a probability distribution from it. All right, going on, here we have the old way of getting a distribution of outcomes. So what we're trying to do here with a tree diagram is to designate all the possible outcomes on three trials 
of this experiment. Okay, the first spin of the spinner, the second spin, and the third spin. On the first spin, with a three-quarter probability, you get a blue. A quarter probability, you get a white. Let's spin it again, another blue, another blue. So what's it, what are our outcomes here? The tree diagram helps us designate all the possible outcomes. This line would give us B, B, W, and then B, W, B, etc. I hope you've done something like this before. So this is going to be a list of the possible outco outcomes on three trials of this experiment. The experiment is spinning the uh, blue and white spinner that we saw before. Okay, now once we've got those outcomes, what do we want to do? We want to assign probabilities to them so we can see how the probabilities are distributed. So it's a probability distribution. Are you getting the hang of this now? And it's binomial because the trials all have the same two outcomes on each one with the same probability. So it's a really interesting little area of mathematics, this. But it's only a small um, idea of the overall world realm of probabilities. But binomials are very interesting, and, and I hope you get excited about that as we go on. So come down now, and let's see if we can do... Oh, we have some probabilities. Hey, I think we can see our first probability distribution. And you might say, hey, I've seen probability distributions before. What about the normal distribution? Hey, wasn't that different? That was given the map of the probabilities, probability density function, was continuous. You could get any values for the variable. Thing like, things like height and weight, this is a lot different. This is a discrete distribution, isn't it? You can't get one and a half successes out of uh, three trials or something like that. It's discrete. Separate values, separate, in this case, integral values, nothing in between. So the binomial, in defining a success or a failure, automatically comes with it the notion of it's a discrete distribution. So we're not going to have a continuous curve. We're going to actually use the calculator later on to map a probability distribution which is binomial, which has success and failure on each trial. All right, so here's our tree over here. We looked at that before. I started to list the outcomes. So here we are. They've now been completed. And screen clippings here from Hayes, Hayes and Harris. And you might have a look at their textbook there uh, to have a look at what they say about this as well. OK, so you've got three blues. How do you work out the probability? Uh-oh. A blue and a blue and a blue. Do you remember you will multiply the three together? Three quarters by three quarters by three quarters. They are independent events. So independent events each time you spin the spinner, it's independent of what came before. So it'll be the simple product of the probabilities. What about two blues? That'll be a blue times a blue times a not blue, which is a quarter, a white, or three quarters squared by a quarter. Hey, you're starting to see a pattern? Because we would really not want to do a tree, would we, for a hundred spins? You'd never be able to write it all out in time, mate. OK. What about another way of getting two blues and a white? OK, blue on the first spin, white on the second, blue on the third. It will have the same probability. And then one about one blue and two white. See what we're doing here? We're calling the probability of a success, uh, uh, sorry, the probability of a blue as probability of success. We're looking for blue as a success. So we're going to dictate down here the number of blues. We're thinking of this as what we're wanting, what we're looking for. So it's a success failure notion. Okay, and the blue features once and then a white and a white. That's a product of those three probabilities. Let's have a look at two blues done differently. A white on the first spin, let's come over here. A white on the first spin followed by a blue, followed by a blue. So it's a white 
and the blue and the blue. It's a product of a, a quarter by three quarters by three quarters. Same idea, independent events multiply the probabilities together. Okay, what about one blue done differently? Differently from this one blue up here, this time it was a white by a blue by a white. So let's do that probability, a quarter by three quarters by a quarter. Or packaging them up, three quarters to the one a quarter squared. Can you see how we can put these always in the order of a number of blues, the successes first, and some patterns are starting to emerge? What about one blue done differently? This is a white and a white and a blue. So putting the blues first, one success, two failures. It looks like it's always going to be the probability of either of those things raised to how many, won't it? Because as we get two whites, it's a white and a white, it's a quarter by a quarter. And what about three whites? No blues, no successes here. So it's a quarter by a quarter by a quarter or a quarter cubed. Ah, this might help us analyse a better way of getting a probability distribution uh, rather than doing a big tree. Let's have a look at developing that now. And here we have it. There's our probability distribution in a bit more of a nutshell now. Here are all the outcomes over here outlined. But we can summarise those more neatly here. No successes, one success, two success or three successes. That's our probability distribution. What would the graph look like? Not continuous. If we had the outcome here, the number of successes, okay, number of successes, what, in three trials, and we have a probability, we do a little spike diagram here, we'd have none, one, two, three, and we might draw spikes up here. Okay, for the probabilities of these things. What would it look like? This is the distribution of probabilities here. And if we wanted to, we could draw a graph of it down here. Are you getting the idea? No continuous curve here though, because it is a discrete distribution. You can't have one and a half successes, okay, in three trials. So start to analyse the system. What's happening? How do you work out how many of each you've got? Look at this. We had one of those. How many blue, uh, two blues have we got? Well, there were three of those in here. Two blues. And three, one blue, and one, three blues. Okay, so that was the interesting idea there. A number of blues and how many times they occurred. So let's just check that. Two blues and a white occurred there, there, and there. So that made three of them. How many did one blue occur? Okay, one blue occurred there, there, and there. So there were three ways one blue occurred. Mm. This would be interesting if we could actually describe mathematically this pattern. We would not have to do all of this because as n increases, this would become terrible. Terrible work if we had to do it many, many times. So this binomial probability distribution analysis now is trying to look at the mathematics behind getting a complete distribution for large n. And remembering it's discrete, you could label the distribution, list it this way, or you could graph the distribution. Ah, getting your head around it, let's go further and see what we come up with. Okay, blue is a success and white is a failure. Then we say P is three quarters, Q is one quarter, and usually we call failure one minus the probability of a success. Because remember it's one minus the complementary event, and here there are only two. It's either a success or not. So P plus Q must add up to one. So we can call the probability of a failure here, a failure as one take P. P 
because it is binomial. There are only the two possible outcomes. Okay, I wondered if you notice those numbers. The numbers we had up here, here they are. One, three, three, one. These were the number of ways of getting three blues, two blues, one blue, and no blue. All the different combinations. All the three combinations of two blues that we could get. And there were three combinations of one blue and two whites. Okay. Now, they follow an interesting pattern. They are the same numbers as in the, oh, binomial expansion. I've seen that before. Binomial expansion. We have two things expanded. If you expand the brackets out, what do you get? P plus Q by P plus Q by P plus Q, something like that. That's what you get here. Now, there's an interesting observation. The coefficients, the number in front of the various terms up here, the same as the coefficients or the numbers in front of the different probability expressions down here. I wonder how that happened. Do you want to find out? Well, maybe we should find out. How can we use this to quickly find the coefficients without a, two, a tree diagram approach? Well, we've seen an idea here. There is a system, a pattern, and if we could work out those numbers in front, that would be good, wouldn't it? Um, what is the problem? Let's look at this one. Let's do four trials of this experiment. So the probability of a success is still three quarters. That's a probability of a blue. Probability of a failure, it's a probability of a white, is still a quarter. Let's say we've got four trials. What's the probability of three successes in four trials? Well, the first part we can work out, a success three times. Success by success by success by failure. So that's going to be, well, we already established that. Three successes would be three quarters cubed, a quarter to the one. So they all must be one or the other. So the sum of these must equal four. But how many ways can you do it? How many ways can you get three successes in four trials? You could have success, 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 not. Or no, we should put failure, shouldn't we? We should put failure there. So that's one uh, set of results. Success, success, failure, success, success, failure, success, success. Failure, success, success. I reckon there's four. But how can we find it quickly without a tree diagram? I've almost got rid of the tree diagram because I understood it well. A success, success, success is always going to be the probability of a success raised to how many you want. And the others are failures. It's only this coefficient, how many ways can you do it, that we need the tree diagram for. But we've already shown an association between that and the coefficient in the binomial. Let's develop that further. Uh-oh. Remember this? Pascal's triangle, I think. Here it is. Oops. So Pascal's triangle, whether you've seen it or not, is a listing of the coefficients in the expansion of binomial terms. Yeah, A squared plus 2AB plus b squared 1a squared 2 1 1 2 1 ever seen it before a plus b all cubed multiply all the brackets out it's a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed the numbers of the terms are 1 3 3 1 coming back this way uh oh now, what we just did was four trials. So that's like P plus Q to the fourth. Here to be 1P to the fourth plus 4P cubed Q plus 6P squared Q squared plus 4PQ cubed plus 1Q to the fourth. Can you see the system? You start with all successes, one less, and have a system, a pattern must have a system 
so that we don't have to draw a tree and work all that out every time. So there's something interesting. How does Pascal's triangle get its structure? Well, let's look at this. One and one gives the... One plus one gives two. Then these two, one and two gives the number in the bottom line. Two and one give three. Three and one give four. Three and three give six. Three and one give four. And we can keep going for as many trials as we like. Obviously still pretty inconvenient if n is going to increase as we come down here. More powers, more trials of the experiment, or more brackets, not going to be fun. So let's do the maths on it. So if we come down here, now the, the actual maths of this is outside this course, but we're going to introduce what's called combinations, combinatorial expressions. Okay, the combination symbol, C. C N R we say it is. Come down here. This is a formula for ways of choosing R objects from a total of N. R objects from N. Okay, now we're not going to discuss the proof of this, but uh, n factorial, n with an exclamation mark, is a product of the first n positive integers. So it means n by n take 1, by n take 2, down to 1. Or 5 factorial is 5 by 4, by 3, by 2, by 1. It's a reasonably com complicated derivation, but this is what it's doing. It's the number of ways you can choose r objects from n. Let's test it. We had three trials and we wanted to uh, choose two to have successes, have two successes and one failure. How many ways could we do that? That would be C, three, two. And if you work that out, that comes to three. That's the entry over here, C, three, two. So Pascal's triangle, why the two do add to give the third is hidden in the meaning of the combination or the definition or the expression for the combination coefficient. So what does this mean here? From three trials, we got one success. This one here meant from three trials, we got no successes. Or here, from three trials, we got three successes. So that's the underlying background to the, the reason why Pascal's triangle does actually work. That was to add to give that one, etc. It's all to do with this expression here. All right, now you don't have to do much with this expression, but you must know that it's a number of ways of choosing R objects from N. And so if you want all the ways from N trials of getting successes, let's write that down now. We want the probability of our successes in N trials without drawing a tree. The first we want to know is what, how many combinations there are from N trials to choose our successes. And then, of course, we'll raise the probability of a success to how many we want, R, and the probability of a failure, which is 1 take P, to how many others N take R there would be. You must either have a success or a failure. So they must all add up to the number N. Now, hey, is this analysis getting to your brain yet? Well, you don't have to know a lot of the background here, but it helps. We've gone from a simple tree to a better mathematical analysis of how that tree is constructed in binomial trials. Come down now and have a look. Now, why are these the same? This is the probability distribution and this is the binomial expansion of brackets. OK, let's write this out as it really is. B plus Q, if we just looked at this, as an expansion of brackets where P and Q are just numbers, not necessarily probabilities. Then what we've got here is how many ways can we get this term? Now, every term in this expansion under FOIL must be multiplied by every other term. So P, you have to choose one from this bracket and multiply it by one to, from another and from another. That's the rule of FOIL, if you like. That's what we mean by expansion. 
So how many ways can you get P cubed? Only one. You must choose a P from each bracket. How many ways can you get a P squared? Ah, that means a P, let's rub all this out. That means I could get a P from here. Okay, this is here. A P from here and a P from here and a Q from there. That's one way. Or I could get a P from here, a P from here and get the Q from the other bracket. Do you get it? How many ways can I choose uh, two P's and a Q? Well, there are three different brackets from which I could just choose a Q and the other two would be P's. Do you get it? C3... R uh, is talking about how many ways you can choose this many P's uh, to multiply by in successive brackets. And then we would have these here, of course, and one. If you want a Q cubed on expansion, there's only one way of getting it. You have to multiply the Q here by the Q there by the Q there. And there's only one way of doing that. So why does it work in the probability distribution down here? Well, from three trials, we want the number of ways of choosing R successes. So how many ways can you choose no successes? Only one, because it means they all must have been failures. Number of ways of choosing one success in three trials. That would have been P by failure, failure, or failure, success, failure, there they are. Can you see why it is a number of ways situation? And therefore you will use CNR in both of them. The choice of brackets or the choice of trials to make into successes or failures. Interesting maths, isn't it? Combinatorial theory is quite interesting and it's not that hard. Anyway, we can't do it in this course. We must move on. So let's go and have a look on the calculator. So on the calculator, uh, let's see if we can find that CNR. So go to run mode first of all. And when you go to run mode, I want you then to hit this button here. Options in there. And when you hit options, you get this window. Uh, we need to hit F6 uh, there to go to the next window and when we get to the next window there it is probability but we're doing a probability calculation so hit F3 in there and when you hit F3 there's the button you want so the idea to use it let's say we want uh, C31 you put the N in first over here N and then F3 and then 1 and hit execute and you get the number 3. So you can actually work this combination out, this combination coefficient out using the calculator so that you don't have to use the formula which is this thing here because in this course we are not really concerned about you using that formula but you should understand that it's a number of ways of selecting without different orders our objects from N. Okay, that's the idea. And then use technology if necessary to find that. All right, let's move on and have a look. Now, what, let's summarize what we've done more formally now the binomial probability distribution. First of all, a binomial distribution describes the distribution or the probability of getting the number of successes that occur in a sequence of N trials. Number of trials is fixed in advance. The trials are independent. You know why? Because we multiply P by itself R times. Meaning every trial has the same probability of a success. Otherwise P would change and we wouldn't have this nice pattern. Each trial has a, a, exactly two possible outcomes called a success and a failure with a probability of P and one take P usually. Each trial has the same probability of a success. They're independent and constant. Otherwise, the pattern we saw on the tree diagram wouldn't work. Okay. Now, so, let's call the random variable X as a number of successes in M binomial trials, and P is the probability of a success. So the probability of the variable taking 
the value x, that is x successes, is the number of ways you can choose to get your success out of n trials, the probability of a success to the number of successes you want, and then the probability of a failure to the rest. If, they, if there are x successes, it implies the rest, which is n take x, x must be failures. Are you happy that we've done it? I think we have a beautiful mathematical summary here of the patterns we see in a tree. And as n increases to 100 or more, we don't have to draw a tree. We have a mathematical approach. Well done, mathematics. Let's go on. OK, now, in the local exam in SACE, they have uh, screen clipped this from the formula sheet. Please note there's a slight difference here, and that is they use K successes in here. OK, we just get used to that. Most books use R, they use K successes here, and the full probability distribution is naught successes, one right up to all successes. Same as in the powers of a binomial, you start with the power of A, if you're considering A plus B to the N, it starts off as A to the N, and then one less power and B comes in, etc. So there is a system there. So you usually start off with, um, well you can start off that end with N successes, which is that, or with a B to the N, and we're doing the same thing here, from naught to N values. OK, let's go and look at how we can use this. Here we are. S uh, some events which are not strictly binomial can be modelled using a binomial distribution. And a binomial distribution we often put like this. It's bin, binomial, and state the number of trials and the P, probably success in brackets afterwards. It's a nice, succinct notation uh, which summarises what's going on to a mathematician. OK, during quality control, here we are. A small sample of N light glows may be selected from tens of thousands and tested and you don't put them back. Since the globes are not replaced, the events are not really independent. OK, so the probability of a success is now what? Um, over a million take one. Because you've removed one, or two, or ten, or twenty. But because the population is so large, effectively taking a few out won't make any difference. So binomial provides a good approximation. So we would do that. A binomial variable is often specified as that. OK, so we've got our language, we've got our pattern, and we're ready to do some experiments. Let's do some. OK, here's some quality control. Yeah, well, no, it isn't. It's looking at chocolates and your chances of getting ones that you like. 72 uh, strawberry rights and the remainder of caramel creams. Five chocolates are taken from the bin with the previous selection replaced before the next chocolate is sampled. So this is binomial. Find the probability that three of the chocolates selected are strawberry delights. At least three are strawberry delights. OK, let X be the number of strawberry delights. OK, so we're looking at the probability of a success. Here it is here, is 0.72, 72 out of 100. Probability of a failure is 1 minus that. So, successes, what do we want? 3. Probability of X is 3. How many ways can you choose 3 from the 5? Could be the first 3, the last 3, whatever. Probability of a success raised how many you want. Probability of a failure raised how many you get. And you could do all that in run mode on the calculator. I'm going to show you how to do it better than that. What about x greater than or equal to 3? We've got to do three calculations. OK, this is messy. Three calculations. Let's take the middle one. How many ways from the five selections can you get four successes? Probability of a success raised to the fourth. And that's the probability of a failure raised to the one. OK, and then you've got the other one. That's a lot of work in run mode. Come down and let's look at what the calculator has on board to offer us in the binomial probabilities here. Let's do the first one. It's a single option. It's a probability of three successes in five trials. And a failure to the two. So, first of all, come over here. Go to stat mode. OK, looking down here at distribution. 
So hit F5. When you get F5, can you see here binomial? So you want to hit F5 again. We get these three options. The one we want here is the first one. BPD, hit F1. OK, up comes this window. Now you put in the number of successes num out of the number of trials and the p-value. I haven't done that there yet. Make sure you have variable there in the list. So we've got variable, we put in three uh, out of five trials, probably success is 0.72, hit execute, and there we have the probability. So that's BPD, the binomial probability distribution on the Casio for a single example of our successes in N trials. Okay, what about that other one where we had, a, had to add up three values? Hmm, this isn't so much fun. Okay, you could do three BPDs. Do BPD like we just did three times and then add them. But there's another trick here. This is accumulating three probabilities. So what you might do is actually go to BCD, which is binomial cumulative distribution. Okay. So we're accumulating probabilities. Now, just one thing to watch here. The window looks exactly the same, except we've got CD up here. So we're going to choose F2, get into BCD. What does this mean now, though? This means the probability of 0, 1, 2, or 3. So if you put 3 in here, it accumulates the probabilities from 0 upwards. Unfortunately, it won't do our problem up here. This wants to accumulate it from 3 up to 5. This uh, BCD accumulates 0-2x successes, including, this is very important, including the x value. Okay, so if I put, um, I put 3 in there, it'll add up all the probabilities of successes of 0 successes, 1, 2, and 3 all after each other and add it up. Number of trials and the probability is ended as before. So let's look at our problem. It's a bit harder than that. Here's our problem. Though that sum of successes is from 3 to 5. Now if we're going to use the Casio, BCD will sum from naught upwards only. It'll only accumulate from naught up to the number. So we've got to actually put in X is 2 on the BC window. So we get the sum of the probabilities 0, 1 or 2 successes. We want 3 included in our problem. So we don't want it taken away from 1. So notice this idea. If you have 3 different outcomes, you want the others, it's 1 minus that idea of the complementary event. Probability of the complementary event. So, we want 3, 4, or 5, take away what's under it. Not a bad trick as this, is what I encourage students to do. Write out all the outcomes. You want these, so it's 1 minus in there. That's 1 minus BCD up to and including 2. Because we want this, take away what's underneath it. Do you get it? Some basic probability coming in here. All right, we're on our way now, so let's see what this problem would look like. Okay, we go to binomial uh, cumulative distribution. For the reason I just said to you, put in 2, 5, and the probability, because we're minusing down the bottom here, what, nor 1 or 2 successes, leaving our actual event 3, 4, or 5 as a result. So here we've hit execute, and 1 minus that probability gives us that. Don't round off until the last answer because <clears throat> in this course generally we work to three significant figures. Alright, how are you going? Okay, let's keep moving and see if we can do some work with it. So here's some questions, 8B1 from Hayes, Hayes and Harris. So uh, have a look, I've got some answers further down after we do the first ten questions. So pause the presentation, have a go. 
Okay, let's look at the next few. Two, three, four. Okay, and you can fast forward and check your answers. They're uh, right at the end there. Let's come down and have a look at what they've got here. Ah, you can use your calculator to draw that spike graph I was talking about before, getting a pattern, right, the probability and the number of successes. Let's have a look at it. This is on the TI. I'm going to do it for the Casio. Binomial distribution, we have 20 trials and the probability is 0.5. You wouldn't like to draw a tree for that one, would you? So let's have a look and uh, have a look down here at the windows. So what we're going to start with in stat mode, go to stat mode and there we have lists. First thing into list one, I want you to put the numbers naught successes up to 20 successes in that list. And then when we've got that in there, we've got to go to distribution binomial PD again. Okay, get to there. And this time we won't use variable. Okay, we're going to, when that's highlighted, hit F1 because we're going to make a list there of it so let's come and look at that so over here we've changed it to list and then the next one to list one number of trials 20 probability of a success 0.5 now because we put list what's going to happen when we hit execute is we're going to get a list of these values then if we hit exit twice we come back to this stat mode window with graph down the bottom that's where we want to be we now want to scroll with this button across until the highlight is up there. So you've got to go across and up. Okay, so we've highlighted that. Then if we now want to uh, go and uh, have a look at entering some of that, so we have to hit options. Oh, I've only got an option key up there. So down here we hit options and um, then we want to choose... F1 which is list and another list comes up choose F1 again and then we get this name here so list 2 is highlighted and we've got a list there to enter now the tricky bit so I've got bigger versions here so we want to put in the last calculation we did that was all those probabilities into this list so what we're going to do uh, to do that is oops, hang on we've just got to go up a bit here what we want to do to do that is to hit shift and the negative sign which is answer and that comes up there and if we hit execute we get in that list all those binomial probabilities that were calculated from BPD the calculator has done a whole probability distribution for us from no successes up to 20 and now we, what we want to do is to graph that. So now we're back here. You need to exit back to this graph here and go set. Okay, so F1 and then set by F6. Make sure X list is list 1. We put 0 to 20 successes. List 2 was a pro uh, um, probability. You've got the calculator to calculate. And then if you execute that, then you come back to this window and hit F1 for graph and we get this binomial. Hey, that's interesting. It's a discrete distribution, but what do you notice? It's bell-shaped. Has that got anything to do with normal distributions? Oh, they're different from that, aren't they? They are uh, continuous, but it looks the same shape. What's going on there? We'll come back to that. That's an interesting result. A discrete binomial distribution with a shape of a normal distribution. wonder how often that happens. All right, let's keep working and have a look now at some problems. So you can draw a probability spike graph like that, just the dots. You don't join them up, remember, they're discrete. That's why it's a spike graph. Don't join the points. 
Alright, don't join points for a discrete distribution. Can't do that. Okay, so you might like to do that and then go on with some of these other questions now. We're going to go through to question 10 and see what you think. So, uh, pause presentation, have a go. Come down here to the last two, question 9 and 10 there, which are um, the last two in this little set. I'm going to go down and have a look at the solutions now. Okay, one, two, and three. Check your answers. Four and five. Six and seven. Eight, nine, and ten. So we're coming along well. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I hope you're thinking about all this stuff. Um, and uh, we're going to develop binomial theory quite a bit in the next couple of presentations. You're going to see some very useful tests and things that you can do with it. Okay, so come on down the last little bit now. And here's another example. A fair die is rolled 100 times. What's the probability of between 15 and 22 fives turning up? So let X be the number of fives that turn up in 100 rolls. So X is binomially distributed. 100 trials, probability of a 6, isn't it? Because a die, probability of um, a 5 on a die. So I'd put here probability of a success equals probability of a, prob probability of a 5, which is 1 in 6. They all have equal probability, assuming the die is unbiased. So we want between 15 and 22. Now, 15 and 22, let's write them out. 0 to 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Now, let's take the probability right up to and including the, we wa the one that we want. We don't want 22 because we have said less than 22 so that goes to 21 hang on i just clarify this here so we're going to go to 21 so we want that included so we'll go up here with a b c d up to an including 21 but when, then we want it to be greater than 15 so 15 doesn't count we want it 16 17 so we'll subtract b c d of 15 including 15 because we only want 16 17 18 19 20 and 21 so you get the idea this little sort of diagram will help you get it right so it's a bcd of 21 minus bcd of 15 including 21 in one and not including 15 in the other so we've got to watch this between keyword between 15 and 22 does not include those ends. So we're going to have all things like at least, not more than, those sorts of words. So maybe just let's look at this. At least includes that number. You have to have that one as the least or more. Not more than implies you include it but you can't go higher less than does not include it less than ok less than implies not include not included alright so you're going to have to be careful with the wording to make sure whether that um, last borderline condition is included or not ok let's look at the problems therefore 11, 12 and 13 coming to the end now 14 and 15 and uh, I think it's uh, very important to have a go at some of these right on the end there Let's look at some solutions. 
11 through 14. Let's have a look at 15 then. And 15. Well, some interesting thinking going on there. Still in that vein of probabilities and things, so it's important to try and get your head around that. Okay, well, I hope you're enjoying the work and building up your skills. Um, there's a fair bit in binomials. We've got a couple of other areas to look at yet. So I hope to see you in the next presentation. Cheers for now.